In each UFC weight class, there's been so many good champions, but there's also been various bad champions. Today, we're going to be taking a look at every single UFC weight class and picking out the worst champion I can possibly find from every weight class. One thing I want to clarify is I'm only going to be including the last 10 years of their weight class, so I'm not going to be including like of all time, because if I do that, then it's going to end up having a bunch of fighters from like 1995. So I'm only going to be including the last decade of MMA. And out of the last decade, which champion has been the worst? Starting off with heavyweight, I'm going to go Fabricio Wadum. Um, he's not a bad fighter. You know, he's got a lot of finishes on his record, a lot of submissions. I think he ended his career on a win as well. Out of every other heavyweight, he's just not the best. Though. We've had Francis Ngannou with his scary knockout power. We've had Stipe Miocic, who's the heavyweight goat. And obviously now we've just got John Jones. He did get beaten by Stipe as well, which is another one of the heavyweight champions. And he's only had one title defence. Every other champion has had it. Well, actually, Francis Ngannou didn't have more than one defence. But he had a, you know, Francis Ngannou barely lost in the UFC. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Fabricio for this one. One title defence only, but he did get beaten by Stipe. Like I said, solid fighter. Just weren't as good as the other champs. Would lose to all of them, or he lost to Stipe, he'd lose to Ngannou, and he'd also lose to John Jones. So, for heavyweight, I'm going to go with Fabricio with him. Not a bad fighter, but he could have been improved. Next, we have a light heavyweight. I'm going with Jan Blachowicz. Jan Blachowicz in the past 10 years has been the worst light heavyweight. We've had people like Glover Teixeira, who I could have included, but I think he was impressive. You know, he beat Jan Blachowicz, and he defended against well he didn't defend against Yuri Prohaska but he put up a tough fight against Yuri Prohaska and then he put another tough fight up against Jamal Hill. Jan Blachowicz got a title shot off beating Dominic Reyes and Luke Rockhold. He beat Dominic Reyes for the belt and he fought Luke Rockhold to get that. Luke Rockhold hasn't had a win since and he's the most chinny guy ever and he wasn't even in his natural weight class. Dominic Reyes hasn't won since before he fought John Jones so neither of those wins are necessarily impressive wins. The only win he's got in recent time is against Alexander Rakic, who was injured. So, and yeah, not Alexander Rakic, who was injured in that fight. He hurt his knee in that fight. His only defense is Adesanya, which is somewhat impressive, but it was a middleweight that was moving up. So, that's probably the most impressive win he's got, Adesanya. But again, that was one defense against a middleweight. And ever since then, he got beaten by a 42 year old Glover Teixeira. He got smoked by Alex Pereira. Well, I won't say smoked, but he lost to Alex Pereira. Um, and he drew with Ankalaev, but he shouldn't have won that fight. That was an Ankalaev win that just got robbed from him. So, I'm going to say Jan Blachowicz is the worst light heavyweight champ we've had in the past 10 years. I really do think it is. I mean, he's not a terrible fighter. He's, pr he's not even in title talks anymore. He kind of came around, beat some bums, won the belt, defended, against Adesa defended it against Adesanya. He should have finished Glover Teixeira, but he was the one that got finished. Then he got given a fight with, I think it was Alexander Rakic. Alexander Rakic got injured in the fight. Then he got given a fight with um, Ankalaev. Drew with Ankalaev. That was for the belt as well. Drew with Ankalaev. Probably shouldn't have won that fight anyway. Probably shouldn't have drew. I mean, Ankalaev should have won that fight. Then he fights Alex Pereira and loses. So now he's in a really weird position. I just think his title run's been really bad. And he's nowhere near title talks anymore. It needs at least two wins before he gets a title shot, in my opinion. So... Alex Pereira, no, Jan Blachowicz is the worst light heavyweight champ we've had in recent UFC time. Middleweight, I'm going with Michael Bispin. He, um, listen, Bispin is one of the BMFs of the UFC. Won the belt with one eye. And he beat people like Anderson Silva as well. And fought literally just after getting knocked out against Anderson Silva. But he is the worst middleweight champion we've had in the past 10 years. I mean, we've had Robert Whittaker, who's better than him. We've had Alex Pereira, who's better than him. We've had, obviously, Israel Adesanya, who's better than him. And unfortunately, Bispin just isn't... I mean, we've had Chris Weidman as well, but Chris Weidman's got a better, le better legacy than Bispin. To get the belt, he beat Luke Rockhold. And I'm not going to say at this point Luke Rockhold was washed like he was when he faced Jan Blachowicz, but he wasn't peak Luke Rockhold. He was the champion at the time, but still a very chinny Luke Rockhold. And he had one title defence against an old Dan Henderson. This was an old Dan Henderson. This isn't the Henderson that fought Bispin the first time. This was an old Dan Henderson in 2016, I think it was. Then after that, he went on a two-fight losing streak. He got knocked out by Kelvin Gastelum and then put to sleep by GS... Wait, was it a GSP fight before? I think the GSP fight was... Yeah, he, he lost to GSP and then he lost to Kelvin Gastelum, getting put to sleep in both. 
I see him as a Marvin Vittori. He reminds me a lot of Marvin Vittori. He's kind of like Marvin Vittori, but he hasn't got a good chin as Marvin Vittori. But he has got more power than Vittori, I'd say. But yeah, Michael Bispin, in my opinion, is the worst middleweight champion. Style-wise, he's very average. Obviously, Lego legacy-wise, he isn't average. He's won the belt with one eye. But style-wise, he's just very average. Didn't have the most impressive title run. Only had one defense against Dan Henderson. So I'm going to say Bispin is the worst middleweight champion we've had. In the, definitely in the past 10 years, maybe not in history, but in the past decade, he's definitely not better than anyone else we've had. Next up, welterweight, I'm going with Johnny Hendricks. First of all, let's be honest, he was probably juiced to the gills as well. But then any, anyway, he got a title shot off coming off a loss. It's very, very rare that we get a fighter who gets a title shot off coming off a loss. And he was one of them. Um, and he didn't even defend the belt once. He did not defeat the belt once. He beat Robbie Lawler for the belt. Didn't defend it because he lost it immediately to uh, Robbie Lawler. And after that fight, he lost six out of his out of eight. I think he was a very undeserving champion. People say he did beat GSP when they fought. But you've got to realise, Johnny Hendricks was 100% on steroids, man. You can't deny that Johnny Hendricks is on steroids when they fought. And even then, that wasn't even... He didn't even win that fight, so that wasn't a title run. But yeah, his title run was pretty bad. Got a title shot after losing. I, th I, th I forgot who he lost to, but he he he'd lost and then got. I think it was GSP that he lost to. I think he lost to GSP, and then got a title shot against Robbie Lawler. But he didn't defend it once either. Lost it immediately to Robbie Lawler. It's kind of like he, he stole the belt momentarily and then got it robbed back by Robbie Lawler. Yeah, Johnny Hendricks for me in the past ten years is the worst welterweight we've had. Tyron Woodley had a good run. Kamara Usman had a great run. Obviously, it's not GSP. Leon Edwards has defended it and he's got a more impressive run in my opinion. He didn't lose it and he actually defended it. So I'm going to say Johnny Hendricks is the worst welterweight champion we've had. Next, we've got lightweight. Lightweight, I'm actually going to go Conor McGregor. If Listen, career-wise, he had a great career in what he did. The first double champ, be, you know, the way he knocked out Aldo in 13 seconds. But when we look at lightweight... He didn't get a single title defense, not only in lightweight, but in his entire career, he never got a single title defense. He got the belts and then lost them immediately or vacated them or whatever. His first title defense, I think, was against Habib, where he got absolutely mauled. That wasn't even a close fight. He got mauled by Habib and lost the belt immediately after winning it against Eddie Alvarez. Was it Eddie Alvarez? No, I think he. I think it was Eddie Alvarez. Um, since then, he lost to Dustin Poirier by knockout and he broke his leg. And his last win was an old wash Donald Cerrone who hasn't won in like seven fights. So he's not the most impressive lightweight run. He also barely beat Diaz to get the title shot. He fought Nate Diaz the first time, got submit, got submitted and lost for the first time in his UFC career. Then he fought Diaz again, which was a very, very close fight. Like Diaz finished him and he barely beat Diaz back, but he just about got a decision win over Diaz, got a title shot, beat Ev Eddie Alvarez, then he lost it immediately. When you look at it that way, it wasn't great. He's definitely not got a better legacy than Islam, because Islam's beaten Volkanovski and Oliveira. Definitely not a better legacy than um, Habib. Other lightweights could be up there, but I just don't think McGregor... I, I think Eddie Alvarez had a better, a better run than McGregor, to be honest with you. I think Eddie Alvarez, if you look at it, he actually had a better run, because even after he lost the belt... He had a DC, he had, you know, he's picking up wins over people like Justin Gaethje. McGregor hasn't, his last win was Donald Cerrone. So I'm going to say Conor McGregor has the worst lightweight run. I'm also going to say Conor McGregor has the worst featherweight run. I think in the past 10 years, he's had the worst, maybe not the worst featherweight run, but when it comes to actual title, we've had Jose Aldo, who's arguably the featherweight goat. We've had Max Holloway, who's one of the best featherweights of all time. And we've got Volkanovski, who's the featherweight goat. McGregor isn't above any of those people. Like I said, didn't get a single title defense his entire career, not even at featherweight. And the second he beat Aldo for the belt, he left and went to lightweight. So it's kind of hard to say that he he's the best featherweight champion when he won the belt and then left immediately. And there's only ever been three other featherweight champs, like I said, Max Holloway, Volkanovski, and Jose Aldo. And they were all better than him. They were all better than him in the past in the past ten years. They've all been better than McGregor, so he had a good run up to the title shot, you know, knocking people out, beating people he shouldn't have beaten. And the way he won the belt was impressive, the way he slept Aldo. But then after that fight, he didn't do anything. Max Holloway's done more than him. Volkanovski's done more. Um, and obviously Aldo's arguably the featherweight goat. So for featherweight, I'm going McGregor. Bantamweight, I'm going to say Cody Garbrandt is the worst. 
the way he won the belt was very, very impressive. He won the belt in a very dominant fashion, in, in which was one of the best performances in UFC history. That performance he put up against Dominic Cruz was one of the best performances for a title fight in UFC history. But then after that fight, his bantamweight um, career went downhill, fought uh, TJ Dillashaw for his first defense, got knocked out. Then he fought Dillashaw again, got knocked out again. Then I think he got a, a win. Um, then I think he went moved down to 125, got knocked out by Kai Kara France. And I, he's got knocked out again as well. I forgot who it was too. I think it was um, Pedro Munoz. Out of his last seven fights, he's been knocked out in four of them. So his bantamweight career went downhill after that fight. It's like all his skill was put into one fight. And then after that, he was just nothing. And Dillashaw, listen, we've had, what other bantamweight champions have we had? We've had Dominic Cruz, who's arguably the bantamweight goat. Dillashaw knocked him out twice. That's He's definitely not... He's probably the worst bantamweight champion. I'm going to be straight up. He's probably the worst bantamweight champion. The fact that like the the title fight that he had with Cruz was incredible, probably one of the best title fights in history. But you can't just have one good fight for the belt and then do nothing else. It just doesn't work that way. He didn't defend it once. He got knocked out. He even tried moving to one twenty five and got KO'd. He's had two wins since. Um, two out of his last, I think. What? Well, yeah, lost four out of his last seven. So. He's just not impressive, but I'm going to say Cody Garbrandt's the worst bantamweight. And when we move into, when we move down to flyweight, there's literally only four people we can pick. We can pick Alejandro Pantoja, Davis and Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, and Demetrius Johnson. It's obviously not Demetrius Johnson. It's between the three. I've speculated all three of them, but I'm going to finalize a decision with Brandon Moreno. The reason I say it's not Davis and Figueredo is because he's had multiple title defences before he fought Brandon Moreno, and he also beat Moreno multiple times. Brandon Moreno's had zero title defences. He didn't defend it against Kai Kara France. He won the belt. No, he lost the belt. That, that, that was for the interim belt. I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. That was for the interim belt. He didn't defend it against Kai Kara France. That was an interim. Um, and he only beat Figueredo twice in four fights. Only beat Figueredo twice in four fights. So if we're talking about who's better, Moreno won two out of four. Surely if he was the best uh, flyweight champion, or a good flyweight champion, he would have won more than twice. And I only feel like, Fig I think Figueredo has been treated badly in the grand scheme of things because it's kind of like because Moreno got the last win, he gets to keep the belt. When if you look at it, they're, they're both pretty even in terms of wins and losses. So I think Figgy has been treated quite badly. It's definitely not Alessandro Pantoja. I was going to say it's him because he hasn't defended it yet, but he's lost him three times. If Moreno's lost to the champion three times, it's going to be hard to call the champion, you know, the worst bantamweight champion we've had. I'm not saying Brandon Moreno's bad. I still think he's going to dominate this top division. He's still beating people like Figueredo, Brandon Royval, Kai Kara France. I just don't think that we can... I think he's the worst one we've had. Um, and he can't keep the belt for longer than one fight. He doesn't. He's never able to defend a belt with with Brandon Moreno. It's like a curse. He wins the belt and then he'll lose it, and then he'll win another belt and then he'll lose it. He just he's on the he can't defend the the uh, the flyweight belt. So I'm gonna say Moreno's the worst. But please let me know if you agree with this list with the worst UFC champions in every weight class. Personally, I think this is pretty accurate. But please let me know what you think.